most of us think that our native language is English or French or Spanish or Greek or some other language that our families, our parents speak to us, our native language is really body language. Body language is the language we are born speaking no matter what country we're from. From the first moments in our mother's womb until our dying day, we participate in a dance of life. But one problem that exists for people with eating disorders is that they do bury their feelings, and the burial ground is the body itself. An eating disorder provides an illusion of control because someone with an eating disorder tends to overfocus on their bodies, on their weight, on their appearance, in lieu of dealing with larger emotional issues. It is not uncommon to hear someone with an eating disorder describe their relationship with their body as a stranger or even an enemy. Most people with eating disorders tend to become estranged from themselves, um, try to get as much distance as possible from themselves, and uh, try to live mainly in their heads. Dance movement therapy is a wonderful way to help people with eating disorders reclaim their connection with their body and with themselves. Because we work directly on a body level, we're able to engage people in the process of discovery, of exploration, of even using a simple hand gesture, and from that hand gesture, beginning to incorporate increasingly more of their body. The tendency for people with eating disorders is also to numb their feelings or on the other end of the spectrum to become so anxious that they can barely tolerate living in their body. So they don't. Instead, they tolerate moving their body, over-focusing on their body, picking on their body, often literally and figuratively. I see people with eating disorders both individually as well as in groups, and the process is very similar. Um, I like to pick up and develop on what I see happening before me. I couch everything in making it safe enough to help the people I see engage in the process and feel comfortable expressing themselves as much as is possible. I, I make it very clear to the women I work with that we are not doing exercise or any stylized form of movement. We are working to move in our bodies, not to move our bodies. Uh, we are not going to be burning calories. Our focus is on expression rather than a stylized form of movement, where, where, which is already choreographed. Um, so I pick up and develop on the unique movements of the individual, even when they emerge on an unconscious level. Um, I'm able to help them and, and do some uh, psychoeducation to help them see that even if they don't plan something in their head, um, that they are already moving from their body and that it's important for them to begin to move from within rather than to look for external means of um, determining what actions to take in their life. So one of the very important things I tell them is that I'm going to be helping them to feel feelings, to express those feelings, and to identify the connection between what they discover and metaphorically how they move through life. I almost always encounter resistance because it's so difficult for someone with an eating disorder to be in their body. So I look for ways to make it safe enough to engage them um, by sometimes using props um, in a way where we, just as I use the eating disorder as a prop to cope, I might be able to use a small prop to engage them in a movement so that they're not without something to hold on to and eventually remove that prop so that we can um, move further and freer in our bodies. I um, ask them um, where the safest space is in the room. 
uh, so that we can, uh, I do this especially with someone with an, um, I'm seeing individually, to attempt not to change them or anything about them, but to understand what they're feeling and to uh, join them in trying to understand more about it uh, through kinesthetic empathy, my own ability to engage in, the pro in a process with them where I can feel the feelings with them to a certain extent and um, help them to understand that I, uh, I'm getting it, I understand it, and uh, kind of validate what they are communicating. Particularly with someone individually, I will go through a process of asking them if they're nervous, building the relationship. Often their primary therapist wants me to work with them to help them begin to experience feelings more. And so it's my job to help them feel safe enough to do that. So if they want to work in a corner, that's where they go. And um, then I usually ask them where they would like me to be and uh, just begin to explore a process that might work. I might notice shallow breathing. I might notice a clenched jaw. I might notice a fiddling in the hands or the feet. We see a lot of anxiety in the whole body. So I might join them in that and gradually move it uh, slower and slower until we uh, become uh, synchronized in our rhythm with each other. Uh, nutritionists talk about pacing in terms of food, but I might talk about, I might relate pacing in food, with food to them, but uh, then I try to relate to them by getting in rhythm with them and um, making it safe enough again for them to allow me to join them in that rhythm and to see what it feels like. And then we, then we can begin to enlarge our movements a bit to understand what it's like for them to live with the disorder and to suffer with the, the amount of fear that they may be suffering with. In a group, I work much as any dance movement therapist might work to, to uh, establish a rapport where I can engage them in the process. Uh, and it's not a free form of movement because most of the people I see are very uncomfortable in their bodies and tend to uh, want to restrict their movements, restrict their breathing, and just not be comfortable engaging in full, large movements. We often start on the floor and uh, sitting with each other, checking in and tuning in, and um, I'll show you in a little bit what I mean. Thank you.